Okay, I did some research and I uh, talked to the race officials and it seems that uh, this is all going to be fairly casual. Um, there's no uh, tech at the race. In other words, um, no one's going to be inspecting the cars. Um, a lot of people are racing truly original cars uh, that they've had for decades. Uh, some people bought them at auctions, things like that. Um, so they're, uh, they don't want to damage or destroy them. Um, some of them are modified um, or have been altered. Uh, so no one's going to be really worrying about turnbuckles or, or ball studs, things like that. So I've ordered a new set of turnbuckles. Um, they're titanium. It's not really a concern uh, as far as saving weight in the front because uh, being a rear wheel drive car with a rear motor hanging off the back behind the rear axles, um, you really are, are having a light front end, uh, lighter than you want. So you may need to put some weight up front anyway to compensate. And uh, even if you didn't have that, you might be putting some brass up front uh, to keep help keep the front end on the ground, get some bite on those front tires. So um, uh, that's not an issue. It's a matter of uh, making sure that things hold together. Uh, these cups are notoriously weak, so um, that doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, I've got the parts on order. They should be here in a day or so, so I'm going to continue the build because I'm kind of pressed for time to get this ready for the event. I'm just going to step forward uh, on the build and uh, uh, move on with the directions. In fact, I may not even uh, worry about the rest of the steering mechanism right now because I may swap out all of the ball studs for a slightly larger size, uh, get away from the 440s and go to a uh, um, uh, a, um, a metric size and uh, go with a, a different ball cup. I'm definitely going with a different ball cup, but I'm, I may get away from the uh, from the associated ones. We'll see. It depends. Um, one thing I noticed that uh, these get really stiff with these um, RPMs, and that's because the RPMs are, are uh, if not tight, they're definitely binding up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to have to do something about that one way or the other. Um, so I probably won't be using the RPMs anyway. Um, I certainly won't be using these turnbuckles. So uh, all that's going to change. We'll see. Um, one thing at a time. So moving forward. So the, the rods that connect from here to the chassis um, can't put those in without having the steering mechanism in first looks like that's going to be a problem as far as getting the other pieces in um, and uh, could probably mount the servo but that might also get in the way so i'll probably leave that i'll probably just uh, start here on uh, bag G, step one, and start with the rear suspension. Oh, also, um, the, uh, the wheels, um, I won't be using the stock wheels that you saw yesterday or the stock tires. Uh, everyone is approved to run a, uh, a modern tire and uh, J Concepts makes a, uh, a couple of different tires um, for a, uh, a couple of different wheel sizes, depending on whether you're running the truck. Um, if you're running the RC10T, you're running a 2.2 inch tire and they make wheels for both front and rear. Um, and if you're running the buggy, they make front and rear wheels, a 1.8 inch front wheel and a 1.7 inch rear. 
And you got to bear in mind that those are two different sizes because the rear tire is more of a balloon tire and the front tire is a, a much narrower. Uh, and uh, so you're talking two very different wheels and tires, but um, they, uh, again, they have both of those. Um, they have a very short pin type, uh, which is good if you're gonna run outdoors on loose dirt. And then they have a, uh, another type, uh, the name of it escapes me at the moment. You'll see them in a future video. And it's a uh, more of a clay um, style type. It's a web uh, type of, uh, of pattern and it's available in several different compounds. Um, I went for an, a very soft uh, clay, uh, dry clay compound, and uh, because that's what we're gonna be racing on. So it's an indoor track, so. And I am ordered several sets of wheels. I'm gonna have a spare pair on hand in case there is a specific tire uh, that is running really fast and they've got them available at the track. I'll buy a set and glue them up real quick uh, just so I can be on par with, uh, with what everyone is running because as most of you know in radio control tires can make all the difference. Um, as far as packs go, I've got some uh, really good um, uh, battery packs. Um, I'll, I'll show you those later. Uh, these are designed uh, to handle, uh, they say they can handle shorty packs um, because of the fact that these uh, have so much weight out the back. Um, I might figure a way to run a shorty pack forward. Um, might 3D print something to uh, to use the stock Ford mount and then uh, have another mount like this area right here is almost enough right here for a shorty pack. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. So let me get that bag out. That's bag G. Uh, you'll notice I flipped the mat. Um, the uh, the Arma logo on here. Um, I was looking at some of the footage from the uh, first day of shooting, and uh, I apologize if it made things really difficult to view. Uh, that all the color and lettering and stuff underneath uh, the work area probably made it really difficult to see what was going on. I apologize. Uh, I'll do my best in the future to um, uh, to not have that be an issue, and that's why I flipped it over for you. So, now you will just have a black background, and if this is bad still, if it's too much contrast, uh, give me a text message and or just a comment in the video and I will uh, I'll come up with a different color uh, back in the day I used to use a blue mat um, and that may have been a little a little too much also back then I don't know you guys tell me I had a gray one for a while that seemed to work This is interesting. Let's see. Three L three R. Is it the same bolt pattern or different? Yep. Now this one looks like 
we've got a lot of toe. It says three left, three R, so that would probably be three degrees toe. This looks like, from the nomenclature, it's very hard to read. Looks like 1.5 right and left. So that would be one and a half degree toe. And you can see it's not as, this one has much more of an angle toe in versus this one. See if it gives us any recommendations. And we do get some uh, some rear camber um, uh, camber link mounting positions, unlike on the front. doesn't give us a recommendation for which one to use. Stock. didn't see anything that looked like a spec sheet or a tuning sheet. I think I'm going to set up with the 1.5. I can always switch out later, but I definitely want some toe in that'll help the car run straighter on acceleration too much and it'll bite a lot and it, it'll won't accelerate as quickly. train. Okay, since I don't have the wheels on or ready to put on, I'm going to leave the uh, roll pins and the uh, axle shim off for the time being because they'll just fall off. Just adding a little spacer to uh, keep the ball stud a little further away from the plastic. Uh, depending on the ball cups that I use, I don't want them to uh, rub against the plastic. And uh, it won't be a tuning issue because I'll use one at either end. So, not going to be a problem.
of these uh, spacers in various sizes. Just um, developed a collection over time. really handy to have when you're trying to tune a car suspension you need to uh, adjust for bump steer or um, tuning your uh, front or rear camber links I'm getting ready. I should seal this up. Let's get out the CA glue. Good to me. Let that dry for a while. Okay, the shocks face forward. So if we're looking at the car. So you'll definitely need to ream out parts of these. You don't need to ream out these guys. Just make sure that the uh, the arms rotate smoothly, and then you'll be fine. I hate working with Eclipse. I was so glad when the hobby got away from these things started using other methods. I don't think anybody liked them. And the manufacturer may have liked them because they were cheap. Engineers may have liked them because they were easy to design for, but 
people who had to build them didn't like them. And the guys at the shops who had to repair and fix didn't like them. things for sure, you better have a supply. That is messed up the way they have that. Are they sure? not correct. That is definitely upside down. It's a great way to cut your finger. There we go. Just making sure they're all seated. Oh, yeah, these things are a pain. Okay, the easiest way, you just yeah, uh, try not to drop it. Just get it into the groove. Get it on edge with your finger. Take your needle nose and see if you got to get it really into that edge there. And then get it just below and above and crimp it in. And that it won't get all the way in the first time, but then it'll seat. And then give it a twist to make sure that it's truly seated. I had more of those in titanium. If nothing else, they don't rust. Okay, time to start a parts box for this car. You know, 
these are going to go all the way through and stick out. fours in titanium that when they go through the countersink are going to go almost right to the end and that'll be more than enough to hold these on threaded that hole already. I'm going to use a longer one there. Next question is, do I want to go forward or back? give us a recommendation. I think the longer wheelbase is probably better. Yeah, forward holes. tell us to use the forward holes, but they don't tell us which of the blocks to use. The, uh, the three degree, the one and a half, or the, or the straight. I thought there was a picture with an overhead. showed the front toe and the rear toe. Not in specific degrees, but it gave you an idea. Okay, um, I'm going middle of the road. That's usually a good way to start. Sorry, I can't give you more information. Uh, later tonight, I'm going to go online and I'm going to look up. Um, there's a site that has a lot of uh, setup sheets for various cars. And I will look to see what I can find for this vehicle. And uh, hopefully they've got a blank one. 